Tonight, Microsoft takes steps to stay out of your private data. BlackBerry earnings disappoint and Viacom programming might disappear for a whole lot of cable subscribers. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 54 for Friday, March 28th, 2014. I am Jason Howell. It's time to get to the tech feed right now. Earlier this week, details emerged that Microsoft once accessed a blogger's email account without permission to uncover an employee who had leaked source code. And in a blog post published today, the company's general counsel, Brad Smith, explains that going forward, if Microsoft receives information that someone is using its services to share stolen intellectual or physical property, it will refer the matter to law enforcement instead of accessing that private content themselves. Microsoft is also partnering with the Electronic Frontier Foundation and the Center for Democracy and Technology to address future consumer privacy issues. And in other Microsoft news, the company requires a $100 annual Office 365 subscription to access editing features for its new Office for iPad apps. But CNET has discovered a loophole in how Office 365 authentication gets enforced on iPads. All that's required is to have someone with a valid Office 365 account log in to Word, Excel, or any other Office app on iPad, and an iPad is authenticated for all Office apps and any future users, even if those users haven't paid for 365. However, this is against the rights agreements that limits users to authenticating only five tablets. A Microsoft spokesperson responded to CNET saying, we do not strictly enforce the limit on tablet installations, but do trust that our users respect and understand the device limits outlined in the EULA. We'll see how that goes. In an effort to streamline the many form factors of the Android brand, a new mandate in the Google Mobile Services Agreement for new Android phones requires the phrase, quote, powered by Android, be present during the boot animation. This logo placement has its own separate set of guidelines for Google and must be present in order for manufacturers to gain access to the Google Play Store on new devices. BlackBerry had its latest earnings report today and beat expectations of a net loss of $0.56 cents per share with a loss of negative $0.08 cents per share. However, revenue of $976 million down from $1.2 billion in the previous quarter represents a 64% year-over-year decline from Q4 2013 and a decline of 18% from Q3 2014. But the company has big plans for 2014. BlackBerry CEO John Chen says he plans to introduce high-end smartphones that cater to keyboard aficionados in the, coming, in the coming 18 months and may be bringing the company's popular BlackBerry Messenger service known as BBM from mobile devices onto desktop computers. Last month, BlackBerry said that it would make BBM available on Microsoft Corporation's Windows Phone and the upcoming Nokia X platforms in the coming months. Messaging tool has over 80 million users and got iPhone and Android apps last year. Now coming up, if you're getting tired, I know just the place for you to go. Uh, but first, uh, before we do that, I want to welcome Brian Fung to the show, tech reporter for the Washington Post, to talk about good old fashioned TV. Welcome, Brian. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's good to have you here. So first of, first of all, earlier today, you wrote about how more than 5 million cable subscribers across 1,000 cable providers might lose access to Viacom programming, Comedy Central, MTV, VH1, Spike TV, those kind of channels, uh, all thanks to stalled contract negotiations. And actually, for me, immediately, it reminded me of Viacom's DirecTV dispute that resulted in a 10-day-long blackout in 2012. How is this situation different, and what's the likelihood that it'll be resolved quickly? Well, uh, you know, the people who are at Viacom have been negotiating very hard with uh, the local small cable companies that are, um, you know, at, a party to this dispute. Um, and, uh, you know, at this point, the, the, the deadline is approaching. It's um, March 31st. So as soon as uh, the clock ticks over into 12.01 on Tuesday, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, uh, and if there's no agreement, then Comca I'm sorry, that uh, Viacom will be uh, sort of contractually obligated to pull its programming. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds, I, I know personally, I was with DirecTV when it happened a few years ago, and uh, suddenly having to go online to find some of that content was uh, kind of a harsh reality. So let's hope it gets resolved. Now, shifting gears a little bit, Aereo, a service that 
We all know, uh, most of us anyways, that streams TV signals grabbed from its massive farm of antennas to its internet subscribers is heading to uh, the Supreme Court next month to fight TV broadcasters' claim that the service is infringing on their copyright. What exactly is at the root of the broadcasters' claims in this dispute? Well, the broadcasters are concerned that uh, Aereo isn't paying uh, licensing fees to uh, to the TV stations, and ordinarily, this is um, you know a perfectly normal course of business for uh, cable companies who carry broadcast content on on their networks. Mm -hmm. um, they pay something what's called uh, trans retransmission consent fees, and uh, you know Aereo is getting away with not paying these fees by pulling those signals out of the air and then um, directing them onto the internet where people can watch you know the the streams for free. Um, What's uh, interesting about this case is that uh, Aereo argues this is simply another um, extension of uh, the technology that gave us the VCR and the DVR, um, basically technologies that allow us to record live television and watch it later. Um, and uh, you know, the the case before the Supreme Court right now um, is about just this question about whether or not. Aereo should have to pay fees to the uh, the broadcasters for copyright. And in the case of the VCR and the DVR, obviously there's there's precedent to back that up in the in the in the court. Um, do you think Aereo might actually win this case, or is this a losing battle for them? Well, uh, it's at this point an open question. I don't, I don't think uh, anyone's won um, anything for uh, for correctly prognosticating what's going to happen with the Supreme Court. I think mm -hmm. that's um, always a, a dicey game. But, um, you know, I think what Aereo is doing is a, it's a really interesting business model. Um, potentially, it could mean really great things for the cloud if it does win. Um, and, uh, you know, at the heart of it, it's just, um, you know, more evidence for the way that, uh, um, you know, uh, for, for the sort of back and forth that we've seen um, between broadcasters and incumbents against, um, you know, rival startups and, and new entrants. Absolutely. And uh, I mean, along those lines, Les Moonves, the CEO of CBS, told CNBC earlier today that it would consider creating its own over-the-top service if Aereo does, in fact, win its case, stating, quote, we are going to win either way. Uh, this isn't the first time he's made this claim, right? That's right. He's um, said that on a number of occasions. Um, and uh, what I think what's interesting about that is the implication that, um, you know, even if CBS uh, uh, if CBS wins, or I'm sorry, if the broadcasters win in the Aereo case, then does that mean CBS won't be committing to an over-the-top service like it's saying it will if Aereo does win? Right. Um, and, and, you know, if CBS uh, says that it's uh, not going to commit to an over-the-top service if broadcasters win, then uh, I think that's a pretty clear example of a case where incumbents have been able to squash um, a service for which there is clearly demand. Yeah, absolutely. And that kind of leads perfectly into this next question, which is, you know, a, a, a massive uh, effort by CBS, you know, led by CBS and, and probably a lot of the other uh, major networks. Would that be the death knell for an independently run service like Aereo that's providing a similar service? Or do you think they could actually coexist in that regard? Well, I think that's a great question. I think there has been one or two, um, you know, previous companies that have tried doing what Aereo has done and just it hasn't really worked out for business reasons. Um, so I think, you know, due to that, I, I wouldn't say it's, you know, too soon to, uh, I, I would say it's too soon to say whether or not an, another area could come along and mm -hmm. try and disrupt the industry. Absolutely. All right. Well, I want to thank you for joining us today, Brian. I really appreciate having you on. Let our viewers know where they can find the work that you do online. I'm a tech reporter for the Washington Post, and I write for a blog called The Switch. Excellent. You're at B underscore Fung on Twitter as well. Uh, so hit him up on Twitter. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. All right. And finally, two men from the Netherlands created, well, something that we can all agree is an indispensable tool. The next time you get tired and you need a place to crash, head on over to googlenaps.info. There you'll find an interactive Google map that will show you if there's a nice place nearby to rest your weary head, if only for a short time. You can add your favorite snooze spots to the map and make sure to denote the type of nap so people will know exactly what to expect. Is it a bench, a bed, a field, or a bridge? Because they're going to ride there in their jammies. 
Uh, the creators of the site included a disclaimer addressed to Sergey Brin and Larry Page, as well as other Googlers, stating, quote, Please don't be mad. This is just a joke, a parody. Uh, that won't stop me from telling visitors of Google Naps that Twit has an epic beanbag for napping. Just ask Burke. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash tn2 and write us at tn2 at twit.tv. Our next newscast is after the weekend. It's Monday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Jason Howell. Thank you so much for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.